In this video, I want to talk about uh, what I think is a very interesting problem. Um, this is the case when you have uh, two masses connected by a spring and then connected by two other springs to a wall. And we want to understand uh, if you displace these masses and let them oscillate, uh, how do we understand the uh, oscillation of these masses? Uh, the solution of this problem will make use of our system of equations that we've just studied and the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So let's begin by looking at a uh, simulation of this problem um, that I've done on um, MATLAB. Okay, we're, we're looking at the oscillation of uh, two masses uh, with the random initial conditions. You see that the masses are moving back and forth. The motion looks uh, random, but in fact, this motion is not random. This motion is actually very simple, but you won't be able to see that unless you solve the mathematics, and that's what I want to do. Okay, so we have our uh, situation here. The x1 and x2 are measured from the equilibrium positions of these masses. We have uh, three springs. Uh, the two ones on the end have a spring constant of little k. The one in the middle has a spring constant of big k. Both masses are the same. I've constructed uh, this situation so that we have a very nice symmetry here. Uh, whether you look at this uh, from this situation from the top or the bottom, or uh, it looks exactly the same. And that means the solution will have some uh, nice symmetry. Uh, we're also assuming that there is no friction here. So to say this is a top view and the masses are sliding on ice so that there's very little friction. There's uh, two uh, physical laws that we need to write down the governing equation. The first is uh, Newton's law, which everybody knows, which is just force is equal to mass times acceleration. The acceleration is, of course, the second derivative of the position with respect to time. The second law is called Hooke's law, which is uh, a law that is used to um, understand motion uh, under spring forces. This is written as F equals minus kx, where uh, x is a displacement of the mass from its equilibrium position, and k is the, called the spring constant. So here we've uh, written down what the spring constants should be. Okay, so how do we write the governing equations? Uh, we have to consider the forces on each mass separately. So let's uh, consider first the force on the first mass. So then we have mass times acceleration. So that will be mass times the acceleration of the first mass, which is the second derivative of the position uh, x1 d squared x1 dt squared, or x1 double dot. This is supposed to be the equal to the forces on it. The forces on the first mass are just due to the springs. So the force due to the first spring is just Hooke's law minus k x1. Uh, the force due to the second spring um, is also Hooke's law minus capital K, X1, except the complication is, is that that spring is also connected to the second mass. So if X1 and X2 was, were equal, so these two masses move the same amount to the right, the middle spring would not change its length, and the net force due to the extension or compression of the spring on that mass would still be zero. Uh, so that means we need to take into account minus x2 here. Okay, so then the uh, force due to the middle spring is this minus capital K x1 minus x2, taking into account 
that the middle spring is connected to both the first mass and the second mass. Again, we do the same equation for the second mass, mx2 double dot. We have uh, the spring all the way on the right is just Hooke's law, minus kx2. The spring on the left would be minus capital K x2, but we have to take into account that that middle spring is also connected to the first mass, so minus x1. Okay, this is our system of differential equations. Um, they're second order instead of first order, but they're also linear and homogeneous, uh, like the situation we've been solving previously. Um, we can put this equation in matrix form. What would it be, look like? We would have the mass times the second derivative with respect to time of the position vector x1, x2 equals a matrix. So from the uh, first equation is the equation for x1 double dot. So we need the terms proportional to x1, that would be minus little k minus big K. So we have a minus little k plus big K in the first element. And then the term proportional to x2 would be plus big K x2. So we would have a plus big K here. In the second equation, right, this whole thing is going to be multiplying x1 x2. So that's the first equation. So the second equation has a plus big K x1. And it has a minus little k x2 minus big K x2. So it has a minus little k plus big K. Okay. You see how uh, nice this matrix look. It uh, has the same element two, same element on the diagonals, and it's a symmetric matrix. Okay, um, we can uh, simplify the notation. Uh, we could write this simply as um, let me put it up here as uh, M. And then if we define x to be this uh, column vector, then it would be m x double dot. And that's equal to this 2 by 2 matrix A times x. And this will be the equation that we'll need to solve where the matrix A is given by this um, 2 by 2 matrix. I'll do that in the next video. Um, so now let me just summarize what we're doing. We're considering a model example um, which will show the power of uh, analyzing uh, a system of equations using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, this is called a normal mode problem. Here, I, 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 for example, I do a very symmetric case where we have three springs, and the middle spring is different than the two on the sides, and two equal masses. We can use physical laws to write down the governing equation. That's Newton's law, and the phenomenological law about spring behavior, which is called Hooke's law. Uh, then, if you carefully consider the position of these masses, you can write down two second-order differential equations and put them in matrix form. We'll tackle the solution of this equation in the next video. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.